Welcome students, this is a review of simple regression. So we are taking a relationship. So we have a correlation between two variables, two continuous variables. And we are trying to now predict that relationship. So we're taking the R and the R squared further. In fact, we are graphing that equation. And that graph looks just like this. Y equals beta zero plus beta one X one. For simple regression, we only have one x. For multiple regression, we'll just add on beta 2, x2, beta 3, x3, and continue. For today, one variable. So our y is the dependent variable. This is what we are trying to predict based on our x, which is the independent variable, and this is our predictor. So can this predict this? So order of these two really matters. The betas are stats terms. You've probably seen the same equation in middle school and high school, except we use a plus bx equals c. It's the same equation. Statistics, we just like to use our own terms. So beta zero represents the y-intercept. This is just simply where does the line cross y. And beta one represents the slope of this variable. So what is the relationship for this variable? In simple regression, this is the R for this. It is the relationship between these two. If you are in my Info 2020 class, uh, your project will start with 10 predictors. So make sure that we have a good understanding of simple regression before we start adding all the crazy interactions. The whole regression line is based on a best fitting line. So we have data and we graph it. And then we have to choose a line. And we can draw a line anywhere that we want to. The best fitting line is a calculated value. So we are trying to minimize the prediction error. And the error is how far is each point from the predicted line. So essentially, if we draw a line straight in the middle, we are trying to be in the middle of all of our data points. And this is a calculated thing. So we graph the data, we put a line through it. You can see our line right there, our equation. And we are trying to minimize this error. And er the word error and the word residual are the exact same thing in statistics. So for error, we are seeing how far is this dot from the line? And so we calculate a value. And then how far is this dot from the line? How far is this dot from the line? And all the way through. We're trying to minimize the error from the line. Guess what? These are all positive errors because they are above the line. These are all negative errors because they are below the line. And they should cancel each other out. So if we add up all the positive errors and all the negative errors, it should be zero or really, really close to zero. There's the equation that does this. I'm not going to let you worry too much about that. Just FYI, this is a calculated thing that we do that Excel does for you. And we love Excel. So we get a line and we get some numbers that Excel gives us based on all this information. So we can see beta 0 is 5 and beta 1 is 2. Let's go back to this. That means that right here, this value of where it crosses the line would be 5, and our slope is 2. Do you remember that rise over run thing you did in high school and middle school? So how much are you rising and then running, rising and then running? That's your slope. That's how that's calculated. So we get these numbers from Excel when it graphs it for us, and we can plug in a number for x and predict y. So what is my predicted y? Actually calculate it right now. That's what I'm asking you to do. So we plug in 5, we plug in 2, and we plug in 50. 50 times 2 is 100 plus 5, so our predicted y value would be 105. That is how we're going to be using regression. Keep in mind that units really matter. It's one of the reasons why unit of analysis is so important. Know what you are using. Know what data you have. For example, if I am using advertising money to predict profit, and I get the same equation, 
That means if I spend one unit of advertising, I should make seven units of profit. So I'm going to put a one here for x and solve, and I get seven for y. That sounds pretty awesome to me as a business person that I spend one unit of advertising and I make seven units of profit. As long as they are in straight dollars. They might not be. So if advertising is in $1,000 units and profit is in $100 units, then I'm going to spend $1,000 to make $700. Probably going to stop advertising with them. Or if advertising is in $100 units and profit is in $1,000 units, then I just spend $100 to make seven grand. I like that advertiser. I want to stay with them. So this is how we are going to be using this information. A couple of notes. Um, standardization. So you could have standardized variables, meaning we take this, we make a z-score out of it, and we take this, and we do z-scores out of it. What that does is it changes my axis. So instead of my axis being here, it is now straight in the middle. So here and here, and my zero, zero point is right here. That will make my line go through the zero point, which doesn't change the relationship, but it can change the interpretation. Don't recommend doing this unless you have standardized information that you have found, then come and chat with your professor. You can also constrain a regression, meaning you can force the line to go through zero. So if we look at this data, I would probably put the line a little bit more right here, but it is forcing it through zero. And the interpretation gets weird because the R is now meaningless because it's not necessarily a best fit line. There are reasons why you might do this though. If you're looking at tests taken and mistakes made, if I don't take a test, then I can't make any mistakes. So zero, zero makes sense. Or if I don't invest any money, then I don't earn any money. So a zero, zero might make sense there too, or hours worked and no pay. So if I don't work any hours, then I don't get paid. Um, what about vacation days though? Then I'm not working and I'm still getting paid. Or sick days. So this is not always the best option. You want to have a really strong rationale if you're going to constrain a regression. And I will tell you right now that if you don't constrain the regression, you could still have it go through zero, zero, just because of the natural thing that happens that makes sense. So I recommend not doing this. We're going to pause right here and we'll come back to regression assumptions.